Hello, this is Graham. Reading academic books is probably one of the first challenges that undergraduates and students returning to college after a long break face. There are many different forms of academic book, but this approach works with most to begin with. Just to be absolutely clear, this is about non-fiction books, OK? When I read a novel, I don't do any of this. I'm really not that sad. Very quickly, let me explain my philosophy in tackling books like this. There is no way that I'm going to be able to read every book that comes my way from front cover to back. In a year, I'd probably read no more than half a dozen books. While I might kid myself that the whole book will be a valuable read, the reality is that there's usually a small bit in each book that's actually relevant to me right now. Later, there might be other bits, but on first pass, I need to know what's covered, how the author or authors have structured the information, and to see if there are any standout aspects that deserve closer inspection. But if the small bit that should excite me is a disappointment, or it's hidden amongst pages of waffle, then I don't want to have wasted hours getting to it and ploughing through dull, tedious, uninspiring, or just plain irrelevant stuff along the way. Let's have a look at memory and what that has to do with reading books. Tony Buzan, a psychologist who was the primary inventor of mind mapping, which happens to be my preferred form of note taking in almost all situations, did some research in the mid 1970s that demonstrated the impact of taking notes on our recall later. If you want to be able to remember something, make some notes as you read it. The accuracy of your recall will be significantly higher if you review these notes within a week. And again, the loss or distortion of memory will be reduced if you look at them again within a month or two. Notice the word look. He demonstrated that we usually remember the appearance of the notes rather than the content of them. And by referring to the image, we can reconstruct the content. So the appearance of the notes is significant. Take your time, use colour, little images, whatever makes them appealing to the eye. And finally, this is true for notes made about almost anything, from podcasts, books, journal articles and lecture notes. A new book arrived recently. It's a classic, which is particularly relevant to a couple of projects that I'm involved in. But I'm embarrassed to say that I'd never realised that Darwin had written it. So to begin with, I open up Mindomo and create a new concept map. It's just a slightly more flexible form of mind mapping. I begin by titling the map. This is just a style I've evolved over time. I use the full bibliographic reference in the APA, the American Psychological Association, current style, with the ISBN added at the end of the reference. The ISBN is a unique reference number assigned to every published book in the world. Having this on my notes makes it much easier to find them later. All that said, you could simply label the map Darwin Emotions and that would be fine. I then turn to the table of contents. Good editors generally insist on a reasonably comprehensive table of contents and not one that's cryptic. They usually list not only the chapters, but the next level of subheadings. This particular one is ideal. If the table of contents is particularly short, for example, just a few chapter headings and no other details, then it simply means that I need one more step to com complete the task though it's actually not that bad having to do so. What you do is skim through the book, spotting the subheadings in the text. They'll always be highlighted somehow. The advantage of doing this is that the pages become part of your visual memory of the book, which helps to stimulate your recall. I then transcribe the chapter headings and subheadings to my mind map. If you look closely, you'll see that I've numbered them each in the style of the original book. In doing this, I've effectively skimmed the entire book. I know what's in it and how it's organised, which also says a lot about the author's perspective on the subject. I will also have noticed those parts of the book that I think are particularly interesting and worth a closer look. And finally, I let the software make it all look pretty by applying one of its built-in themes. And so we come to a decision point. 
there will be some books where I can tell straight away. Some books will quickly emerge as being completely useless to me, in which case I'll probably just stop as soon as I realise this and make a note to that effect on one of the branches of mind map. This particular book though is so good that I'll want to read more of it. By far the most common situation though is that there are some bits that I shall want to read sooner than others. My project involves the expression of positive emotions and surprise. So I'm going to select chapter 8, a bit of chapter 12, the conclusion chapter 14, and maybe 1, 2 and 3 if I feel it's worth it when I've looked at the rest. Darwin and his editor were actually brilliant. They included further details of the breakdown of every chapter at the beginning of each one. So I can see what the content of it is at the beginning of each chapter heading. So here you can see that I've just transcribed the details from those opening lists onto my mind map. If they hadn't done this, then I would have had to have skim read the opening paragraph of each chapter. Almost all textbooks have an opening paragraph that summarises the content of the rest of the chapter. In the majority of cases, you can get almost all you need from that paragraph. And of course, again, if I find a particular chapter of greater interest, then I can read it in more depth and add more notes to the mind map. And here is my finished for the time being mind map. I've had a good overview of the content of the book, can see areas that I want or need to come back to later to make more detailed notes. And in doing this, I've created a visual memory aid to the book. Believe it or not, show me that mind map within a week or so and I'll have no trouble remembering quite a lot of what it was about. In case you don't like mind maps, here is exactly the same information but presented in a simple bullet point list. And that's it. Until I return to the book later for an assignment to check up on some quotes or for some other reason, I don't need to come back to it. I simply need to look at those pages of notes one week and one month into creating them. Do try to give this approach a go. Don't be put off by the techie stuff. Have a go at hand drawing one if you prefer. If it works for you, then that's great. Thank you for listening. If you have any ideas for future videos or feedback about this one, please get in touch. Goodbye.